Today let's build a catch can. Welcome back everybody, Joe with Forge, so the 11th update to the drag car video update series. Today we are remaking the rear catch can for the dry sump system that used to sit behind the rear tire under the bumper. Now we're going back to where we wanted to mount it, which was in the trunk. As you can see, some of the parts are already made here, but uh, we're just tracing out the part of the inlet to the catch can that needs to be coped out. And here we're using the Swag Off-Road bandsaw adapter that I bought to cut the pipe. This thing comes in real handy for small work like this to be able to cut out a pretty precise shape. And from there, I just use a flap disc to cope the pipe to fit up to the four inch diameter main tube for the oil tank. Just uh, kind of do this by hand and soften the edges to make sure it fits up properly. And once I uh, deburr the inside with the aluminum deburring tool here, we go ahead and uh, put that onto the pipe to make sure that it has a good fit up. You know, aluminum, you can have a little bit of gaps to use with the filler rod, but uh, we got the fit up pretty dead on this time. You know, once we have that tube fit up to the main body of the catch can, I uh, trace out with a Sharpie just the outline of the, the tubing so I know where I need to open the hole. From there, I take a pretty good sized unibit to get a good start. This thing goes up to one and three eighths inches, so it kind of knocks a lot of that tubing out for me pretty quickly. And then I take a non-ferrous carbide bit and uh, open the pipe up. You just gotta take your time, make sure the tool doesn't get away from you. And you just open up to almost the edge there. You can see there's a little bit of a lip as to where that pipe needs to fit up. Uh, again, use the deburring tool there and get it to fit up pretty much perfectly and then uh, cut it to length in the big bandsaw to get a perfect cut so we can fit up the Dash 20 AN fitting for the breather line that's gonna come from the back of the engine. Now that we have the inlet of the catch can finished, we need to finish the detail work on the outlet of the can. What you can see here is a cap being drilled out on the press to fit up to the outlet of the catch can. This fits on the inside of the can. Basically what this does is makes it so the oil and air does not have a direct path out the top of the can. It has to go around the edge and through the side windows to get out. And then from there, a two and a quarter inch piece of tube slips over the top of that with some of the perforated disc that is then packed loosely full of stainless steel wool to make it so the air and oil has to pass through all those different medium and lots of surface area so the air can get through, but the oil has to condensate on that and then hopefully drip out and down to the bottom of the tank. Time to weld this thing up. So we've already welded the different layers of the top together, the different separation tubes, and now we're just placing that onto the main body where we've already welded the inlet dash 20 section two. Uh, from here, we're gonna take that cap and weld it to the main body. As you can see here with some uh, action welding shots, wanted to make sure we got a few of those in. I did touch the tungsten in a few spots, so we had to stop and uh, clean that up and start over. But I'm fairly happy with the way it turned out. And uh, let's show you guys how this thing is really going to work. So if you look in the bottom here, as I flip the can down, the uh, oil has to come in the inlet and it's gonna splash against the side of that inlet tube as you can see as I look down in here that uh, is a great place for the oil and air to come against and condensate and fall down before it has to come in the bottom and then back up to the various media that we already talked about. So now that we have that done we're going to weld the hemisphere onto the bottom with the drain and then I made a simple bracket to uh, mount it to the side of the fuel cell in its final location. Just putting the last few dabs on the corners of this bracket before we uh, put the torch down, take a deep breath, cool the part off, and then walk over to the car and see how she fits up. Now it took me about a day to put this can together with all the different pieces and fabricated parts and the welding time. There was a lot of starting and stopping throughout the day, but we finally got it done. Now we're just uh, bolting it on to the side of the 
fuel cage where we had already put some tabs to mount this can in preparation for the relocation. We had mentioned that in a previous video. It used to be under the, the car behind the rear tire. We wanted to get it up into the trunk in a more proper location for safety and for ease of servicing. Now let's talk about that dash 20 line that comes off the back of the engine and routes to this breather can. Now it used to go around the drive shaft, around the exhaust, in between the transmission brace and the transmission and the underbody panels. So we were able to simplify that routing. So starting with the front wheel drive shaft brace, we were able to route it to where the exhaust used to go with a nice bracket, no smash pipe here, just a hard line that switches over to soft line up through that fuel access door. And then it runs through a seals it dash 20 firewall grommet to the interior and into the rear firewall with that same seals it grommet to make sure it's sealed up and then uh, over across the front side of the fuel cell to the 45 degree angle to set up the fitment of the pipe perfectly. And that's a wrap. Hopefully that gives you guys some insight as to how I design and build a breather can or catch can system for a car. It's pretty important to make sure that you have all the internal baffling set up properly to separate the air from the oil and condensate the stuff you want to collect at the bottom of the can and just let the vapors and air come out the top. So with that, we'll see you guys on the next video.